I think that's like the similar building that what we saw in Argentina. It is our first and only day in uh, Montevideo. Montevideo. And we are getting some exercise to start it off right. And it is a beautiful day. Yeah, we're at this um, Gatorade Center and they have all of these um, pieces of equipment for people to use. We're gonna go get breakfast. Good morning workout. Afterwards, we're gonna see the first stadium of the World Cup. Hi! Hi! Hi, cutie! Hi! I saw you're laying out. You're having a great day, right? You're having such a great day. Bye, baby. Ciao, ciao! Oscar? Oscar? Ah, perfecto. Gracias. I'll tell you, Ben. Si. Sí. Gracias. Good towel. Like we're gonna have like vested interest in every game. Whoa. We are in Estadio Centenario. Estadio Centenario was built between 1929 and 1930 to host the inaugural FIFA World Cup, as well as to commemorate the centennial of Uruguay's first constitution. The stadium has a capacity of over 60,000. The first World Cup match was played here between Uruguay and Peru. It hosted more than seven group matches, including the final match between Uruguay and Argentina, where Uruguay beat Argentina 4-2. We're in a soccer stadium that is 89 years old right now. It looks like it was only made 20 years ago. Graceful. Gliding. Yeah, that's me. I glide. A museum of Uruguay's football history and past World Cups is held inside the stadium. Here we have the four goals from the Uruguayan team in the first World Cup. It's an awesome museum. Now on for lunch. Hola. Hola, ¿qué tal? Lunch was very good. Now we're off to our go to our free walking tour and we're gonna learn about the history of Uruguay and then maybe get a coffee. We have coffee and I am even more awake and I haven't even taken a sip of it yet. It's psychological. crazy thing that we've learned so far is that Uruguay was not created from their own independence movement like a lot of other countries here. So they were created out of necessity to kind of break up Brazil and Argentina, Argentina by Britain. Strange. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. To the Constitution Square. Uh, we we know it. Uh, La Plaza Madrid, Madrid Square. Uh, this church, we know it as Plaza uh, Madrid, our cathedral. So the Constitution name is not important. The name is because of the. Name. As I was telling you, when when Spain was fighting with Napoleon. What it refers to to tourism in Uruguay. We always had tourism from people from Argentina and people from Brazil. That was it. A few years ago, we were starting to receive tourism from people that were coming from Europe from abroad. And so we are changing the way that Montevideo works to offer a, a greater time schedule for the for the, for the museums, for, for everything that you want to, to enjoy that. So we just finished our free walking tour and it was great. Yeah, we learned a lot about the history of Uruguay and their culture and it's very unique. It was really cool. We ended up at this Mercado and now we're gonna go walk the... Rambla back to our Airbnb and um, kind of get ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow's a big day. Yeah, we're gonna try to cook dinner tonight so hopefully we find some good food to, to make. The Rambla is a pedestrian walkway that goes along the coastline of Montevideo. It is the longest continuous sidewalk in the world with a length over 22 kilometers. The promenade runs along the Rio de la Plata and continues down the entire coast of Montevideo. The Rambla is an integral part of Montevidean identity and has been proposed as a World Heritage Site. During our time walking the Rambla, we saw many locals working out, fishing, or drinking their traditional yerba mate tea with friends while enjoying the sights along the water. Got some groceries, now it's time to cook some dinner. I'm gliding here. Yeah, look like at this footage after it's gonna be like, yeah, I wasn't gliding. Am I gliding? No. I'm just not a glider. Sometimes I walk sexy and you're like this. I was like, no, shake your butt back and there you go. Yeah. He's walking sexy. 